Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here, and I got to be honest with you. I thought review season was right in the rear view mirror. I finished up Halo Infinite, did our longest review on the channel ever, and went, okay, into the backlog, into the retro games. I go. It's about to be a lit month in December. But one final release snuck up on me that was supposed to come out at the beginning of 2021, but here it is all the way at the end of December. And when it was quietly revealed with a trailer that didn't show much of anything, I thought to myself, oh boy, I don't know how I feel about this one. We're talking about Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning. Recently, THQ Nordic released a Fate Sworn expansion pack, which sounded amazing for this game because as someone who really liked the original game, Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, I was thinking to myself, New content for this game? That's insane. But the way it was revealed for how long it was delayed, the minimal details we got, I was looking at it going, I don't feel good about this one. So, I was wrong after playing it. But you know what? I have a pretty good ratio. According to my channel, I've been wrong only one other time. And that was about Ghost of Tsushima. So if I'm wrong once a year, hey, that's not too bad. I'm doing a pretty good job. And if you look it up on YouTube, I guess a lot of us feel like we're wrong about a lot of things. And I get it, right? Except this guy here. This guy thought that nunchucks weren't cool for some reason. I don't get how you're wrong about that. Nunchucks are sick. Shout out to my boy, Michelangelo. Anyway, today we're talking about Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning and its newest expansion, which I imagine a lot of you are probably snoozing on because it was quietly released and they didn't give us much to go off of. But I've played it and I'm excited to now report pretty cool stuff here. All right, so first things first, get your pinchers out. Squeeze yourself a little bit, okay? It's kind of crazy. It's a 2012 game that against all odds came back, right? We had to get EA in the mix. There was a studio named 38 that was run by Kurt Schilling that was sued by the state of Rhode Island. The studio goes out of business. The IP's in limbo. Somehow THQ Nordic extracts it. Not only that, they re-release the game. And then furthermore, they add an expansion to it. Brand new content almost a decade later. Really crazy stuff. So yeah, there was a couple of moments I was playing this where I was like, this is almost magical. The fact that this even exists. But then that started to lose its luster. It sank in like, okay, this is it. We're playing it. And what surprised me more than anything with this expansion was how much was there and how beautiful it was. So you go to the region known as Mithros. This is a mountainous, snowy region, and it's so colorful. I think the best art parallel right now in the terms of color palette and presentation would be a last-gen version of Blood and Wine. I really felt like there was a similarity there when I was looking at the two. It's bright, it's vibrant, it beckons you to explore. It's very fantasy driven, of course, as a fantasy RPG. And I found myself very much captured by the environments. Now, what's kind of surprising is I thought this expansion was a good opportunity for THQ Nordic to show what new Kingdoms of Amalur content could really look like in the future. But I get that they're limited by old tech. So as you go into this, just know there are still a lot of areas that are not necessarily super open. They try their best to keep it as open as possible, but really you're going to go down some pretty straightforward pathways. There's not going to be these sprawling cities, but it adds a lot of personality to the world. And again, a lot more content than I expected. We're talking about 10 ish hours worth of content here, about a six or so hour main storyline, and then a ton of side content that continues throughout the region. And there's a whole new area to explore. It's surprising, but it also goes beyond that. It's not just the storyline, it's not just the quest lines, it's also tons of things that involve character creation new twist of fate cards, new late game content that you can find in the base game, new accessories, new weapons and shields, new armor sets, new crafting items, new enemies to fight new chaos portals, new dungeons. Uh, it's a full on expansion. It's surprisingly meaty. And I thought to myself, this is so awesome. If you want just more of Kingdoms of Amalur, if you remember, I said that the remaster deserved more because I felt like there were a lot of things that needed to be adjusted with this re-release. And I didn't think that THQ Nordic was necessarily opportunistic here, but one of the things that was missing was new content and taking new approaches to said content, like the way you would explore the world, the way it was paced out. A lot of those intangibles, I think, are adjusted here in this expansion, where the quests aren't sending you all over the map and you're fast traveling a million times. Things are relatively local in this DLC, which when you compare it to the base game, which has you getting a quest here on this part of the map, fast traveling over here, talking to this person, fast traveling all the way over here, 
It's a lot of loading screens, a lot of bad pacing. It breaks up the experience. This expansion doesn't really struggle with that. And I think it's a strength that will go under the radar unless you've played a lot of the base game. So it was stuff like that that really resonated with me, but also just getting new weapons, armor, that stuff, that carrot at the end of the stick, that's great for RPG fans. So having all of that there, plus this new chaos system is great. Adding all that new end game content, adding a new skill for you to skill check certain things in the world space, like closing down chaos rifts that you can detect with said skill. It's all there. It really truly is in every sense, an expansion. It reminds me of how I felt earlier this year with Murder on Eridanos. It was one of those expansions for the Outer Worlds that I played and went, this is really good because it is more the Outer Worlds, but as a story, as systems develop, as they introduce new mechanics, it makes the game better. Where there is a true feeling of separation between the expansion and the base game. Sort of how I felt about Burial at Sea versus Bioshock Infinite. In Burial at Sea, let it be known, I think is the best DLC of all time. And it hasn't been triumphed yet, but I'm just saying that this had those same feelings for me, where I was like, this feels like a completely different product in so many ways. Yet still being familiar enough to know this is Kingdoms of Amalur. The story, I think, could be received as typical fantasy drivel. And I wouldn't blame you if you felt that way. In fact, that's how I kind of felt. It's about finding the new god of chaos and tracking them down, stopping them. And if you've played the base game of Kingdoms of Amalur, you'll know this sounds somewhat familiar about stopping godlike figures that are about to commence a rampage over the lands of Amalur. So it doesn't really reinvent the formula there. I think the strength of Amalur has always been the world, not really the storytelling there. So I'm hoping in, I imagine future entries, they can improve that sort of stuff. All of this is voiced though. I think that's definitely worth pointing out. I think that is the general expectation, but the way it's all voiced and it still feels like it's content from 2012. And to me as a nostalgic individual, I find a charm in that, but don't expect them to overhaul the facial animations and provide a true next gen experience for Kingdoms of Amalur. Like they're still using the same tech that's there, but I still think it gets the job done. It's also worth knowing that this is content that you can only access towards the end game. Around level 30 is a good time to head into this content. And the good news is there's other DLC that's already available for Kingdoms of Amalur that you don't need to play to experience this. This is something that once you start up the game and you are of the level, you will receive a mysterious letter. No one's gonna run up to you, all a courier in Skyrim and be like, here, letter for you, your eyes only. Uh, that's not gonna happen here. It's just gonna be one of those situations where you spawn in, boom letter go read it quest starts and from there you're off i was level 40 i had to borrow a save file from thq nordic salute to them because mine corrupted i had a around level 25 save file and i fired up i start playing and something happened i don't know what happened something happened it broke so i reached out to them like yo you guys any review saves on file because i'm kind of screwed right now fortunately they had me covered so i used their rogue level 40 and i went in there i was shredded i'll be honest and so that made combat a little less interesting for those who haven't played Kings of Amalur. Uh, that's the real superstar of the game is the combat. But all in all, when you take a bird's eye view at this package now, uh, Re-Reckoning is pretty impressive, I think, because it's got a lot there. Unfortunately for Switch owners, you don't have this expansion yet. But for the rest of us, like this game was just available on PS Plus for free. This is a $20 expansion that I think offers more new stuff in the Amalur universe, which is really fun. It's fun to be in there. It's fun to do new things in it. For me, the main reason I didn't like the remaster is I said it was good for new fans. If you haven't played it, go buy it. But otherwise, like, there's nothing here for you. But now that there is new stuff, it's like, hey, there is something to go look forward to. And I really enjoyed that. It showed that this core game is still very fun. And I, again, really hope they give it a sequel and they expand upon it. I wonder if they're ever going to bring back the MMO that was shut down in, I want to say, 2012 as well or 2013. That'll be cool to see if that ever comes back. But yeah, I just found this to be kind of surprising. Definitely caught me off guard. And I was wrong with my assumptions. I made them all on ham radio. I covered it on the show and I was like, yeah, not really feeling this one. I don't I don't feel comfortable with it despite my excitement for it because it was just a quiet announcement. And I don't know why they weren't more preachy about it because this does have 
a lot of positive qualities. It adds a lot to the game where I think fans will be pleased. If you're brand new to this, again, and you never played Kingdoms of Amalur, I do recommend you check it out. The game's always on sale for about 20 bucks. This expansion, again, is around 20 bucks, and I think what they're charging for is incredibly fair. I think it's a really good price tag. It adds a lot of new content there, and if you're looking for it, I'd say dive in. But if you haven't played it, try out the base game, see if it's for you. It's definitely a little bit flawed, especially nowadays, but if you can understand its age and play it as is, I think you'll find something kind of enjoyable as a fantasy action RPG. But that's all I've got to say here about Kingdom of Amalur Re-Reckoning Fate Sworn. A pretty solid expansion that I do say you should check out for yourself. So have you played it? Let me know in the comments down below. Other than that, follow me on Twitter, follow me on Instagram. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.